I've reviewed a lot of Python developer resumes now as a senior developer, and I've even been part of some interviews myself on both sides. When I'm being interviewed, despite not being the best coder and being self-taught, competing with other people who have gone to university for computer science, I still end up getting job offers. Because I was a million dollar selling real estate agent before, this has taught me to sell myself in a unique way. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my secrets on how to sell yourself as a software developer so you can stand out and get job offers. So here's the thing, when you're applying for a job, there are just always gonna be so many other people who are better at coding than you are. These days, interviewers are spoiled with choice. They get a lot of good developers' resumes on their desk, and it's honestly way too much for them to go through. Their jobs are kind of boring, like they have to look at resumes and figure out who's the best candidate. There's a lot of reading. So one of the gatekeepers between you and your job is this bored person. So you need to excite them. If the recruiters have a bunch of near equal options, the decision to choose which one will be an emotional one. So it's up to you to evoke that emotion inside of them. Here's some tips on how you can evoke emotion in job interviews. And a lot of these things are just tiny things, but they really make all the difference. First of all, stand up straight in your interviews. And uh, if you have a standing desk, set to standing mode, uh, get a tiny tripod for your phone, put the phone up here so you're not having that disgusting angle from your laptop when you're doing a video meeting. And uh, because you're standing up, you're less likely to slouch, you're more likely to use body language, basically what I'm doing right now. And it's gonna end up feeling like you're giving a TED talk and it gets some sense of authority and power. Um, it changes a lot of how you use your voice, you talk, you, you usually talk in a more, more confident way. And also subconsciously, the other person will be like, he was standing in his interview, interesting. It can be those little nuggets that can help them remember you and maybe even take a, take a liking to you. Not inevitably in your interviews, you're gonna get the tell me about yourself question. And and most people will be like, be like, well, I graduated university in 2017 and then I worked as an intern at Schnorr. Look, I don't care how boring your backstory and lore are. You can always make them more exciting by how you explain them. Hiring managers hear these stories day in and day out and they all blend together into the same mess anyway. So like, try to have some fun with it and like evoke some emotion, like really show your passion for what you're doing and what you have been doing and why you've done so. I made a video about this a while back that can go into more detail, but basically you can take any background story and just spice it up so much more by going into why did you do that? What were you feeling that drove you to do this? And uh, what do you feel like doing now? What drives you? Yes, of course you want a job because you want to make money, but like there should be other things motivating you. Highlight those. So don't be so logical all the time in the interview. Save that for the job. Try to evoke emotion the best you can. And on that note, take any opportunity you can to make a joke or have fun. We're all human beings and we all want to have a fun time. So, you know, when you have an interview, both parties are kind of a bit nervous because you know, you're meeting a new person and you both want it to end favorably. Hiring managers are going into the interview thinking, oh, please be the one so they can end the process and move on to the next. They want you to succeed. So show them that you are the one. And the best way to line up the mood is some humor. And the best part is you can even recycle your jokes. like. When I do interviews in the real estate software industry, I always bring up the fact that making software for real estate agents needs to be very intuitive and have good UI because real estate agents are so non-technical, they can barely open Excel. And that usually gets a smile or a chuckle out of them. And that's a great way to line the mood. You might think you're not funny, but the whole situation of an interview is already quite tense. And any effort you can make to line up the mood will be received in a much more positive light. So the bar for humor is just so much lower than if you're, you know, doing stand-up, which you're probably not doing. And it's especially important now to evoke emotion with AI. Like, we're all working with AI on our day-to-day -day right now. So try to humanize your interviews, you know? Nobody wants to talk to a robot anymore. We're already doing that with ChatGPT all day. So show the person that you're a human, you can evoke emotion and your interviews will go a lot better. Next up, take control of your interviews. So like you're getting interviewed, right? But you should also be interviewing your interviewer. The interview is a two-way street. 
So you should also be interrogating the interviewer. If the interviewer is your future boss, you should make sure you're qualifying that person if they're qualified enough to be your boss. Ask about their previous experience. Had they led teams before? Had they led successful teams before? Does the team have enough experience to meet your learning objectives? My secret weapon is asking the interviewer, what do you like the most about working with this company? You'll find what happens is they'll start talking about how great the company is to you. And psychologically, they're trying to sell themselves to you. And that just puts you in a whole better position in the selection process overall. And remember, interviews should be a discussion. It's not just you answering all their questions and letting them be in control. Feel free to clap back after you answer and uh, ask them some questions, you know? So I really recommend the book, The Cell by Fredrik Eklund. Uh, this is a guy from Million Dollar Listing. He knows how to evoke emotion very well. And his book has taught me a lot of uh, these things. I want to touch on some more low hanging fruit right now. I mean, there's so many videos talking about, you know, optimizing your resume and all that, but still people are making these mistakes. You know, for example, for example, just writing out what they did at a company and without adding impacts or metrics, um, not using title engineering, I call it. Basically, if you were recruited as a backend developer, but you ended up doing front end as well, well, you, you're allowed to change your title to full stack on your resume because that's what you're doing. So choose the title that describes the work you've done the most, not what it says in your contract. And then people have like too much text on their description or they'll have useless skills listed. Like I saw a resume that listed logging as a skill. Wow, dude, I'm soaking wet. You know how to log? Or you'll have an about me section that's just a complete waste of space saying, oh, I'm so passionate about data-driven architecture. Like, dude. And another thing that Friedrich Eklund talks about in his book, The Cell, is you want to be prepared of your red flags and your green flags. So you need to be able to downplay your red flags and upplay your green flags. So if you've job hopped a lot, you can be prepared to have a good answer to kind of downplay that. You know, maybe you are you really wanted to get exposure to a lot of different technologies and now you know exactly what you want and you kind of stuck with the technologies and the types of projects that interest you. Other than that, networking is very useful. So how do you network? Well, you hang out on LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, Reddit, Discord, Slack channels, you know, actively contribute there. Don't really try to sell yourself, just try to help people. And usually a lot of job opportunities come in. Social proof is great too. do some content creation. I mean, I have this YouTube channel, like honestly not too many subscribers, but it helps me stand out and gives me some sense of social proof. And what you notice is just a lot of these small things that seem very tiny, they add up and that's what will get you your job. And I know a lot of software developers struggle if you know the social part of things, how can you increase your social skills? To be honest, the way you do this is you just have to take risks. You know, when you're in an everyday conversation, you have that thought in your head, like, oh, I want to say this, I want to do this, but like, I'm not sure how they react. Those are the things you got to just do anyways. You can't just be filtering yourself all the time. People are not always going to react positively to it. But that's how you become socially fluid is you just don't care. And that's what will make you improve your social skills and give you an easier time to connect with people because you're not always censoring yourself, you know? Anyway, that's it for this rambling. I hope it was very useful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.